Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Christine. Today I'm here with Brandon. Hello. And today we're actually gonna go over our Italy and South of France itinerary. So Brandon and I were there for actually four weeks. We rented a car and drove along the coast and had such a great month. Lots of food, lots of hotels, lots of shopping. So today's gonna be like a big roundup of all the places that we went to. We're gonna talk about some of our favorites and each little area how long we stayed in each and some of the tips that we have as well a lot of you guys had questions about the car rental situation and all of that so we're going to cover that in today's video if you guys enjoy videos like this if you like the travel content thumbs up this video so we know and let's go ahead and dive right in also just got a new little hair coloring situation so that's why it looks a little different uh, Brian and i started off our trip flying in and out of Rome and that was just easy for us because we're flying out of LAX, there are direct flights, it was super easy. We stayed two weeks in Italy and then two weeks in south of France and we booked the flights about three months in advance and then we started booking like the restaurants and hotels like a month in advance. We booked a lot of the hotels more last minute because it was such a long trip and there's so much to plan. And I feel like we were able to do that because it's off peak season. Yes. Usually if you're doing it in like summer or something where there's a lot more people going, you definitely want to give yourself more time to plan because we were lucky with a lot of the restaurants and hotels that there's a lot of last minute openings. We'll start with like where we started in our actual trip and kind of work our way through to south of France. So we started in Rome, but we actually took a train first to Florence. And Florence was actually surprisingly one of our favorite little cities that we went to. Probably my favorite. Yeah. So we stayed at three different hotels. I wouldn't say any of the hotels were great or we didn't like any specific one, but this one, Hotel Renaissance, was definitely the best location of all of them. Really central and is actually closest to our favorite restaurant, which was... Posteria Ganino. So that was actually a place that we went to near the last leg of our trip. We went back to Florence near the end of our trip when we were getting ready to fly back out of Rome. So it was probably one of our favorite restaurants in Florence that we had tried and one of our favorite food places that we tried overall. Yeah, super it, good. Yeah, we had like a truffle ravioli. Mm -hmm. That was incredible. The vibes of the restaurant were so fun. There's a lot of people just sitting outside drinking, smoking. Their wine was incredible. I had a red wine that I loved and I'm not even like typically a red wine person. So this is definitely a must go. Our hotel was able to book us a reservation, right? Yeah. So that's a nice thing too about staying in a hotel versus Airbnb. You get like the benefit of a front desk and having them call restaurants. They speak Italian obviously. And so sometimes they also have an in at restaurants. Another thing that we love to do in Florence actually was vintage shopping. This is some of our favorite vintage shopping that we yes. did and some of Brandon's favorites. Yeah, so Hunter Vintage, definitely my favorite. If you go to Florence, you have to go visit him. And Street Doing was another really good one that she really liked. And they also do tax-free, which is pretty rare, I feel like, for vintage shops. Vintage shops. Yeah, because normally when you go vintage shopping, they tell you they don't do tax-free because it's like a vintage shop. Yeah. But Street Doing gives you that tax refund, which essentially is like 15% off of everything. You can also kind of barter with them and get things for a little bit lower. Plus, you get that tax-free, which is really nice. Yeah. But they had a huge collection. They had a high-end, but also like actual vintage thrifting thrifted clothing, which is really nice. So vintage shopping around there was really nice and it wasn't until we left Florence that we picked up a rental car. So while we were in like Rome and Florence, you don't really need a rental car while you're there because the city is very walkable. There's bikes that you can use, scooters, a lot of public transportation that you can use, but for the rest of a trip, it was definitely very useful that we had a rental car. We rented our car through Avis and we just wanted something like basic that yeah. was gonna do the job. We had a lot of luggage with us. And if you are planning to take public transportation, trains, buses, whatever, it's very doable and it's pretty easy to figure out if you're used to using public transportation. Yeah. With public transportation to you, I feel like you kind of have to pack light just so it's not such a hassle of getting on and off. Also, going back to car rental, I forgot to talk about it. We rented the car for I think around 25 or 26 days. I forget, almost the whole month after we left Florence. And it ended up being, I think, 1800 for the 28 days that we had it. So I think that comes out to be about, what? 
60 to 80 dollars a day but you have to account for the gas the gas was pretty expensive like i think to fill up it was what 65 dollars each time and near the end of the trip we actually started running into some issues finding gas they're actually having a gas shortage like they're just having supply chain issues so you just have to be aware of that if you're renting a car that check the status of that and see if that's like an ongoing issue they had no issues in italy but south of france in france yeah. they're having some serious because i think someone told us it was like one in four gas stations is out of gas in france yeah and Something in paris like it's like one in two it's completely out of gas. So just be aware in Italy though, we had no issues, but once you get close to the border, you have to kind of think about that. And then also with the car, there are toll highways as well. The tolls are never anything super crazy, but you kind of just grab a ticket and however long you stay on these roads, that's how much you pay. I think the most we paid was $40, but, but we were on it for four or five hours. Longer, yeah. I think, yeah. So normally if you're just going like an hour or so, you probably pay three to five dollars. Yeah. They definitely do save you a lot of time yeah. taking the toll roads. And I, I think for us that was worth it, yeah. yeah. And then also with that, when you are traveling obviously internationally with these tiny little fees, it's useful to have cash on you, yeah. to have change cash or a credit card that has no international fees also if you're using a navigation try to use Waze because they actually notify you of speed traps and cameras i don't know if they get all of them but i noticed late into the trip that there's a lot of speed traps out there yeah and so those you can actually pay some high fees if you go like even five wheeler speed limit it takes a picture of your car and then your rental company at the end is going to bill you for that. So which we still haven't got. Yeah, any. which we didn't get billed for, but definitely got hit we, by some toll cameras. Some yeah. Also, if you guys are more interested in what we did day to day, I do have weekly vlogs while we are in Italy and South of France. If you guys want to check those out, yeah. I do have all the places linked in the description of those videos, but this is more like a curated roundup. Gelato actually originated in Florence, which we didn't know and it makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of gelato places around Florence. So while we were there, we had gelato pretty much every day or every other day. And our favorite one that we tried was perch, perchy, no? But that was really good because they have really good flavors and mm -hmm. a test for us was yogurt, stracciatella, and mango. And that was probably one of my favorite like yogurts I and stracciatella. Lemon. Yeah, lemon's always a good one too. And they had my favorite lemon. Yeah. A famous sandwich place that we went to twice was called Al Antico Veneo. I'm probably butchering all of these names, but this is like a famous sam sandwich shop. If you look them up on Instagram, I think they have like 130,000 followers or something like that. But they have really bomb sandwiches. They're huge, like bigger than the size of our heads. And you have to try the truffle ones. They're incredible. The flavor is just so good. And it's just so good if you just want a quick bite, something like really easy for lunch. And we took it with us on the road. So that's always really great. They have three locations on the same street and all the locations have crazy lines, but it goes through super fast, I think, cause they're used to the crowds and yeah. being super efficient, so. Yeah. Did a artiganal? Arginali? I don't know. Did it Arginali? We'll pop the name on the screen, but this was a cafe that Bryn found. Yeah, this is a little cafe. I think they have two locations in Florence, and we like the one by the water the most. Just a great little cafe. You can get a quick little bite. Really good espresso, too. But pretty much any cafe you're going to go to has good coffee. This one is just like kind of a cute vibe. They have good pastries and croissants, but you can go to any cafe and they're all like incredible. After Florence, we went over to Pisa. We didn't really stay in Pisa. We stayed more like along the water, still kind of in the Tuscany area. So yeah, in Viri, Via Reggio. Via Reggio. Yeah, so we liked that area and we stayed at the Grand Hotel Principe di Piemonte. Gorgeous hotel. This is probably one of our favorite hotels that we stayed at. Yeah. The service was incredible. It was a five star hotel and it actually was not that expensive considering. Considering the service you got, like. Yeah. Great. A plus. We would Great. definitely stay there again. I would go out of my way to stay there again because we had such a wonderful time. The hotel itself is gorgeous, but there's also two restaurants in there that are like. Really some good. of the most amazing food that we've had. So they have really a two-star Michelin restaurant on their like main floor. And this one is called the Il Piccolo Principe. Has a two-star Michelin restaurant. And we ate there and ended up being like, what? 
two hundred dollars a person yeah so it's quite pricey but right. that kind of comes with the michelin star restaurants but we had a great experience the food yeah. is really good and on top they have another restaurant called the ristorante mato via reggio yeah more casual but really good food. That was one of my favorite steaks I had all trip. Yeah, and we and had- And the service was impeccable. Yeah, service was great. So that whole area is super cute. We didn't really stay there a long time. I think we stayed there for like two days, but mainly hung around the hotel and it was like a good little rest stop for us. It also served as kind of a base while we went to Pisa and saw the Leaning Tower. Mm -hmm. There's not much to do around there. You go see the tower for like 30 minutes, take your pictures, and then you're like, okay, let's go. Yeah. The next day after seeing Pisa, we went to Luca, which I thought was way better. Uh, it's like a cute little medieval town and it was fun to walk around. Yeah, and we also went in October, so it was actually pretty rainy. Like I think it rained probably Probably like 50% of the time. Yeah, 50% of the time. Like throughout Florence, it rained probably half the time that we're in Florence. That's something to kind of keep in mind what season you go because Luca, when we went, it was pouring rain pretty much all day. So like you yeah. can't really experience we, yeah. and explore the beauty of the town and appreciate it if it's pouring rain like that. So. Okay, after that, we actually headed off to Milan, but we did a pit stop in Portofino, and this was actually probably one of my highlights. Best pit stop I've ever made. Yeah, like I, I wanted to stay in Portofino longer because it is such a gorgeous little city. And I really liked Portofino because it's like a really pretty city, like right on the water. There's like a lot of little houses and apartments on the coast, so you just get like the most gorgeous view driving to there was stunning yeah it was like unreal and i had just picked up my leica camera so i was taking pictures of everything yeah. and then we ate at the belmont hotel splendido which is like a very famous hotel they've said that princess diana has gone there there's a lot of celebrities that have gone there and it's just a gorgeous hotel it's very expensive to stay there so it's kind of yeah. nice that we we're able to do lunch and kind of see the grounds go into use the restroom a couple times you look at the lobby you're like whoa this is really nice yeah. the restaurant is called La Terraza, but the view was insane. Like I'll pop yeah. on some of the pictures that I took yeah. while we were there, but we just had the best time. The view was gorgeous, but the food on top of that was also amazing. And yeah, I, I definitely think that's a must go because the hotel is gorgeous and you really get yeah. to see such yeah. like a good, it's a good taste of Portofino. For sure. And you don't have to stay at the hotel because we didn't stay at the hotel. We just drove up, we made a reservation. I just emailed them and they got us a table. So definitely highly recommend that. So after Portofino, we went to Milan and we spent, I think, two days here. Only, no, we didn't really spend one night in Milan. Yeah, one night, two days. Yeah, yeah so we really did not spend a whole lot of time in Milan. We ended up coming back to see Alyssa and Marco later on, but there's not really a whole lot to do in Milan besides shop. But our hotel was okay. A lot of the restaurants that we went to were all okay. Except for Except Poporoya was like a place that we discovered because we were just craving Asian food by that time. But aside from that, it wasn't good because we were craving it. It was also just really, really good. And we put on like Alyssa Marka loved it. We put on our photographer to it. Cute little Japanese restaurant that's owned by like two chefs. I don't know but they're yeah. featured in like newspapers and articles and stuff and that was definitely a good one especially if you are craving asian food we've heard there's a lot of really good asian food in in milan, in milan. yeah yeah after that we went to lake como and this is where we wanted to spend a good majority of the time there we actually spent a whole week in lake como because one we were looking at wedding venues we also took our engagement photos which if you guys follow me on tiktok and Instagram just posted a ton of those. So that was a whole vibe being in Lake Como and we rented a boat, took some pictures on a boat in Lake Como and it was just so gorgeous out there. The whole time we were driving around, we were like, oh my God, this is so pretty, this is so pretty. Like literally every turn of the lake was gorgeous. This is when we first started playing around with staying in Airbnb. So up until then we had stayed all hotels and in Lake Como we stayed in probably our favorite Airbnb of all time in Dervio and it had just like five windows, floor to ceiling windows and all you could see was the lake and the view and so pretty. waking up to that, going to bed with the lights, like it was just so gorgeous. And I'll go ahead and link the Airbnb that we stayed at. And because Lake Como is such a big kind of like touristy area, everyone knows about Lake Como, a lot of the hotels around there are very expensive. 
anywhere with like a good view, you're gonna be paying a lot of money for. So the Airbnbs were kind of nice one because we we're able to do laundry eventually. Mm -hmm. We we're able to make our own breakfast, go to farmer's markets, bring some fruit home. And so it's kind of like a nice change for us, but the area overall is just very expensive. So you end up spending way more money. The first place that we ate at in Lake Como, first of all, none of the places that we ate at were really wowed us. Like I don't think Lake Como is known for the food. It's more so like the view and like, just the vibe of being there. So none of the food was incredible, but we went to Urban Fish for lunch, which is actually recommended by our Airbnb host. And it was like a very good, solid lunch. The vibe was super cute. Like you had a great view of the lake from there. Coffee was all super good. And that was actually the first time that we had pizza in Italy. And once we had the pizza there, it wasn't even anything like incredible, but we had the pizza there and we're like, wait, this is so much better than any pizza we've had back home and we need to have more of it. Yeah. Uh, Serrano Al Lago was a beautiful hotel on Lake Como and we had like a nice lunch here. And I would definitely recommend booking like a lunch or a dinner at this restaurant. Um, probably definitely our favorite restaurant. Yeah, and we, we went to at Como. We actually got there right around noon. So we were the first ones in the restaurant and got the best seat in the house right by this little opening. We saw boats coming and going yeah. and being able to like have our bread and olive oil with that gorgeous scene was yeah. definitely really pretty. Yeah. And the food all, was really good too. Yeah, the food was all really good. The bread and olive oil in all of Italy was. Yeah, like every meal you just sit down and you can expect to be served really good bread, yeah. good olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Also, a lot of the places that we went to, the wine was like very cheap. I think it was like three or six dollars for a glass of really good wine. Yeah. So you definitely get spoiled out there and you also don't have to pay for tips. So actually a lot of the food out there is way more affordable than we're used to back yeah. in LA. Yeah. yeah. And at some of the restaurants we went to, literally, wine was cheaper than water yeah yeah okay another notable spot we waited for this gelato place to open for literally almost an hour it's kind of like an iconic red gelato place it's called il fabrica or la fabrica del gelato and actually in menaggio yeah in menaggio so this is actually near one of our their second airbnb that we stayed at but the yogurt there was incredible i think i had a yogurt stracciatella it was amazing yeah like I would love to find a gelato place here that makes anything half as good, because that was amazing. Okay, so in Lake Como, there's a lot of like little towns that you can do, and I actually really liked the little towns because it was kind of a different pace and kind of change of scenery than what we're used to in those bigger areas. So one place that I loved is called Carreno Plinio, and it's a very cute little town. I think the population is like 12 or 15 people, and it's super quaint a lot of like little stairs and rocks so you have to wear like comfortable shoes to walk around. But it's very quiet, very photogenic. Like literally all the little nooks and crannies, we're like, wow, people live here. Yeah. Like we saw this couple that was swimming and he was saying hi to everyone that was coming over to take pictures and super cute town, definitely worth visiting if you're in Lake Como. Then Brand and I did a little bit of a hike up to see the most gorgeous view of Lake Como. And I don't think we've ever heard anyone talk about this, but I think it's called Chiesa di Sant'Andrea. It's like a little church that's up on the hill. So we actually is- We went there for the waterfall, but instead, honestly, you can pay to go into the waterfall, but you should just keep following the path up to the top church. And it's a spectacular view of the lake. Yeah. So we took some of our favorite pictures up there. Sunset views up there are gorgeous. It is quite a lot of stairs. So wear comfortable shoes. Yeah, wear comfortable shoes. Then last thing I wanna talk about in Lake Como is the boat ride that we took. Um, I'll go ahead and pop on the name of the little company that we rented from, but I think it was $300 for an hour, which is not too bad. A lot of the areas, a lot of the hotels can recommend you a boat rental service, but I've heard that it can get up to like $1,000, yeah. especially if you want it to be a private boat ride. So. Keep that in mind, it's expensive. If you don't mind going with other people, I think it's worth doing for sure because you just get like a gorgeous 
tour, you can see a lot of like the famous villas and wedding venues and stuff like that from the water view, yeah. which gives you a totally different perspective. Yeah. I feel like that's how Como is low key supposed to be experienced is on the water. Yeah. And then also while we were there, we were looking at wedding venues. So we actually didn't do a whole lot in Lake Como besides that, because a lot of the times we were touring venues and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I will eventually have a separate video on the, ven the venues that I looked at and maybe like quick thoughts and what I thought. After Lake Como, we went to south of France and the first place that we went to was Nice. And we stayed at a hotel that was kind of whatever, but the biggest tip for us while we are hopping around so many little areas is to have a home base. And we had a home base in Nice. And then from there, we kind of popped around to other towns that were nearby and yeah. that just saved down a lot on repacking and having to move around. So we went to Les Plongeois and this restaurant was gorgeous. You definitely have to make your reservations like weeks in advance. And I first saw this restaurant on TikTok. I think everyone that is into like the aesthetic and vibes knows about this place because it's very iconic. The food there was amazing. The views, um, we went there right around sunset time too. So that was super nice. Even yeah. if you can go there for lunch and grab a drink and a bite, I think definitely must go because it is like one of the most beautiful restaurants yeah. I've been to. Yeah. And then in Nice, we also went to Chez Moy. Chez Moy. Yes, someone corrected us, thank you on that. But we had escargot there and it was a great experience and it was very cheap. Like I think they had a three meal three course meal situation for like, like $30. $30 and you got like escargot steak and some dessert yeah. and I also got escargot and duck. two other things so your duck was really good yeah the duck was really good so for the for the value it was amazing but the escargot itself was really good and the service best server wow. I've ever had in my yeah. life he was like so such nice. such a gem they gave yeah. us like another escargot at the end for free yeah so, loved him. Great restaurant, very Definitely like go. small hole in the wall. And After that, we went to Antibes, Ease, and Monaco, and this is while we were staying in Nice, right? Yeah, these are all places we went to. We went to Monaco, and we went to Cafe de Paris, which is just an iconic restaurant right there in Monte Carlo, and very central to all the shopping and everything that goes on right there. And Cafe yeah. de Paris is at, is a, such a great location. Inside is gorgeous, but you can also sit outside and have a whole view of the city and see like what's going on. Yeah. Monaco is more like a shopping city. Yeah. So if you want to go to some of the major designers, um, there's like Goyard, Saint Laurent, Celine, Balenciaga. A lot of the stores there had more stock of things that I've seen in any of the other locations. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a nice plus if you're like a big shopping person, but there's not really much to do around Monaco besides shop. Yeah. Like it's a kind of a sceny place. So we also stopped by Antibes and Ease, which is a little bit more like smaller towns. They're more like beachy towns, yeah. but when we went, it was raining. So we didn't really get to see like the water view or anything like that, but definitely worth stopping at and seeing because super cute little towns. After that, we stayed in Nice for three days because we were kind of popping around to all these little towns. Mm -hmm. But after that, we went to Provence and this is probably like the highlight of our trip. So we stayed in Aix and Provence. That's kind of like what the locals call it was just Aix. And we stayed in Hotel Le Pigeonnet, which is yeah. like another probably like top two hotels that we stayed at. Yeah. This place was a little bit more expensive, but I think because it was such an iconic hotel, the outdoor pool is gorgeous. Like the grounds are just set up to have weddings and events there. Accommodating too, they opened the sauna for us late yeah. night. Very accommodating to have bikes rental. They're able to get us a wine tour yep. same day. Mm -hmm. So that's the nice thing about staying at like a four or five star hotel. And this was like a really nice place to stay in Provence because I feel like we got to really experience the Provence lifestyle. We got to have like a slower breakfast, yeah. sit by the pool for a little bit and just walk around the grounds was super pretty. And then our favorite pizza place that Brandon asked actually found. Mm -hmm. Delici Deli de Capui? I don't know. Capoi? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, this is probably some of the best pizza we've ever had in our lives. Yeah. So if you go to X, this is a must. We went twice in Three days over Three there. Three days, yeah. yeah. And like we went there and became friends with the owner and he's like, you guys are back. Like, must mean you like it. Um, but we had the truffle pizza and we just had his recommendations. He liked giving us a lot of the more like complex 
yeah. pizzas that had so much flavor. The dough was so chewy. And if you guys are foodies, yeah. you definitely have to go to this place. This is the best yeah. pizza I've ever had. And usually pizza that has too much on it can sometimes be overwhelming, but somehow how they do it, you can taste like each individual thing and all the flavors just go so well together. The cheeses, the meats, the truffle that he uses, like even Jeez. chili oil that he has in the restaurant was like incredible. Okay, so Provence was super cute. There was a lot to do around there, but definitely like, like Lake Como, the pace of life was a little bit slower. It mm -hmm. was more of a countryside feel. There's a lot of wineries out there if you want to do like wine tours. The Lavender Fields are famous, yeah. which we didn't get to go to, but we'll have to do that next time. Yeah, and then after Provence, we went to Opide. Yeah. And Opide, we actually... Favorite Airbnb of the trip, for yeah. Claire. Yeah, bet between this one and the Dervio Lake Como yeah. one, this one was amazing. It's a bed and breakfast, yeah. so they serve you breakfast every single morning. Claire and it was like, serves you breakfast. She yeah, the host. a beautiful home, a beautiful pool, you have to stay there if you're gonna go to that area because it's right outside of Gord. Yep. Gourds, whatever you say it. Perfect place to stay um, to explore that area. And our favorite restaurant was in Gord, was La Trinquette. Definitely our favorite restaurant that we went to out there. So we actually stayed in Opid. We wanted to stay in Gord because. We've heard a lot about that little town, but Opid, we are really happy that we stumbled upon this area because the grounds were gorgeous. And like we said, the host was really nice. She recommended us like a cute little town that we walked up to and had a really great time at. Opid was a cute little area, but it's really close to Gord. And this area is more of a like historic little town. There's lots of little shops and stuff to do around there, but very slow piece of life, countryside feel, and lots of wineries around there as well. What I picture South of France to be. Literally. Mm -hmm. Before we went to St. Tropez, we actually stopped at Cassis, and we are actually really glad that we stayed there, yeah. or stopped there, because it was just a super cute, little town along the water when we went the weather was actually nice so we got yeah, to beautiful see the view we grabbed like a couple scoops of gelato and just sat on the steps and kind of watched the kids swimming in the water and yeah. the coast and it was super pretty and then we went to restaurant Le Bonaparte which is actually a really good restaurant the mussels that yeah. we got there we still talk about the mussels yeah. they're amazing it was served just like escargot and brandon had a really nice steak there yeah i would honestly go back to maybe stay Cassis. like a night in cassis or yeah something. the vibes were really nice yeah, and I, th I think also it was nice that the weather cooperated because we got to appreciate the beauty there yeah. so then we went to saint tropez we stayed in saint tropez for three days and we stayed at a really nice hotel and it was called la firme De Augustin Hotel. It was a four-star hotel, and I think the key to south of France is the cute little boutique hotels. Yeah. There's a lot out there, and you actually don't pay that much money. I feel like you probably pay more in Lake Como for less. Yeah. You know what I mean? So south of France, for me, I think it's worth investing in a nice hotel because you get all the amenities, you get mm -hmm. gorgeous grounds. And this hotel was super pretty. You saw lots of cars in the parking lot. It also, we happened to be in St. Tropez at the same time that there was like a Porsche meetup, which Brandon loved. It's just a vibe being out there. Yeah. Um, we went to the beach one day, Brandon actually went in the water. The water there's, was so warm. There's a lot of locals around in that area. I think also time of year, like there wasn't just a lot of tourists there, but it, uh, there's a lot of shopping to do out there, it's, but we really liked it. Everyone was super- Yeah, everyone was super nice. Though. Yeah, we went to Le Club 55, which is like a really good, lunch restaurant along the beach the vibes were amazing like yeah. it was a huge restaurant all outdoor and everyone was just sitting outside having a good time the seafood was amazing i had mussels which were incredible and you had a steak that was really good but the vibes of the place was definitely 10 out of 10 if you're staying in saint tropez definitely stop and just like have a lunch there have yeah. some wine and then we went to la part de Ag agnes yeah what is that I remember that. That was the place where we tried booking a reservation next door. Remember that salad that you had? The seafood salad at the beginning? With the <gasps> sauce. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. This was like near the end of our trip. So it was like delirious. really, we were ready to go home. <laughs> but this was a really good pasta restaurant along the street. And actually was right next to another restaurant that's like incredible. Got really good ratings. So yeah. if you go to Le Part de Agnes, or the restaurant next to it, you can't go wrong because yeah. the food was amazing. Um, so then after that, we actually popped back to Florence, experienced that restaurant that we to told you about, and then yeah. we returned our car in Rome. 
Yeah. And that was like the last leg of our trip. And we only got to spend two days, really, a day and a half in day Rome. Day and a half in Yeah, because yeah. we spent another day in Florence. Yeah. So we only had two days in Rome, so we definitely want to go back because we had a great time. And it's like very lively and scenic as well. Literally everywhere we went, I would recommend. Yeah, all the food Rome. was incredible. Like some of the best food the entire trip that we had was in Rome. Yeah. The first place we went to was Trattoria de Enzo. Huge line. We got there, I think, around 7-ish, 7.30 Waited for maybe. like 45 minutes. They served you wine in line, which was nice. Yeah, and we got sat pretty quickly and had a really great dinner. We heard some people that waited like one or two hours yeah. a previous day. Yeah. So I think if you go there, they don't take reservations. Mm -hmm. So you just, line up. you just line up and you as soon as you get there, you're kind of intimidated because the line goes pretty far back. But goes pretty quickly the it's food yeah. is incredible and like brandon said you get wine in line so it kind of helps the time go a little bit quickly but food there incredible yeah and After then the next day we went to this little food market and went to casa manco he's like a pizza maker and he was super cool giving us like having us try slices while we were waiting and uh, definitely recommend checking out this little pizza spot. And this little food court area is uh, super fun. You could probably grab a lot of other stuff and try different stuff. Yeah, and his pizza spot, actually, he charges you by the weight. Yeah. So that's a little bit different, too. If you want to try some of the different pieces, it just is all by weight, how much you get. Mm -hmm. So super nice guy. Highly recommend going to this place. Then that night, we had Tonarello for dinner, which the line here was actually insane. But we got really lucky and got sat in like 30 well, minutes. Well, because it was nice because they're smart about it. They have all these different lines. So they have like a line for two parties of two. So that line moves pretty quick. Yeah. And then if you have a bigger party, you have to wait in another line. And so like, it's kind of nice that they give you that separation. But the restaurant is huge. Like there's so much seating. Like the line goes through really, really fast. Yeah. But the food there was incredible. We had like an artichoke that was really good. The pasta that we had was delicious. Yeah. And definitely like some of the best food we had was in Rome. So if you get there, be prepared to wait in line a little bit, but yeah. you'll have some amazing, amazing food. Yeah. And the wine was so cheap too. Mm -hmm. Then we had Odeleg, which is just like your standard delicious gelato, oh, like really good cute gelato, little though. area, but really good gelato. But we also totally forgot to talk about the Wi-Fi situation. About two weeks in, buying data started to get really expensive with a international plan. So I actually looked into getting a little mobile hotspot and we ended up going with Hip Pocket Wi-Fi. Their customer service is amazing and it ended up being around $10 a day. I think it was a little bit less than that, but you can have up to five people connect to the hotspot bring it around with you everywhere we had unlimited and it was really fast so highly recommend if you're staying in europe for a long time it's very cost effective and you can get it shipped to you and it comes with a return label as well and we're actually going back to paris soon so i definitely will be using this every time we go back overall we had a really great trip we started off the first two weeks like writing everything out in an excel spreadsheet and planning what we wanted to do but near the latter end of the trip we kind of just started spontaneously going to places and looking up reviews and stuff like that brandon started adding a lot of restaurants to a google maps list yeah. and that actually helps a lot because you can kind of see where you are on the map what places are near you so that's a good tip for us that helped us near the end of our trip as well a lot so if you just find a lot of places and bookmark it save it to your google maps and that way if you happen to be near someplace like yeah, so other than that, if you guys have any questions, let us know and we'll answer as much of it as we can down below in the comments. We'll go ahead and list all the places that we went to and link all the Airbnbs and hotels. So this was a big roundup video. It took us a long time to compile this. So if you guys enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Support the channel if you want to see more videos like this. We're headed to London and Paris, then New York and Miami. So we have a lot of travels planned this year. Japan opened up, so we'll eventually have to go to Japan. And if you guys want to see roundups of those areas, let us know. But until then, we'll be vlogging up in the corner. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.